A very good morning, all of you. So today's live session, we'll have MCK's discussion from the topics which uh, we discussed uh, for the past three days, hypertension part one, part two, and part three. Along with that, I have two homework questions for you. The first question is, we can just make a note of. So whenever you suspect a case of uh, hypertension uh, in your clinic, which investigations would you suggest? So what are the investigations that you would suggest to a patient whom you suspect to be uh, hypertensive or who has a, a known history, uh, either in family, uh, etc. So what are all the investigations that you would prescribe? Right? Uh, for example, uh, urine analysis. So why do you go for urine analysis? Blood analysis. So why do you go for blood analysis? ECG. Why ECG? Chest X-ray required? If yes, why? So all the investigations which are required in hypertensives. And second question, uh, observe this. We have this palm. So which part of the palm can be used for feeling pulsations, feeling thrills, and for feeling heaves? So which part of the palm is used during palpation for feeling pulsations, thrills, and heaves? So consider these as your homework questions and get back through mail for further discussion. So we'll start with today's questions in the following. First question, I hope you guys are ready. All of the following are etiological factors in hypertension except high sodium intake, lack of exercise, lack of obesity, heavy alcohol consumption. So which one do you think is more appropriate? Okay, Ankur says he's ready to watch the movie. Uh, I wish I could supply you popcorn, Ankur. Uh, from next time, let's plan that as well. So as you know, uh, various lifestyle modifications are essential in order to manage and even lower blood pressure. So uh, non-pharmacological management, which we discussed previously. You might get confused. That's the reason why I've intentionally incorporated options B and C. Go through the question once again. All of the following are etiological factors except. So these are your keywords. So which of the following is not an etiological factor? Lack of obesity. Isn't it? Good. So no confusion whatsoever. Lack of exercise, on the other hand, would again uh, can tend towards or tilt the balance towards unhealthy lifestyle, which can be a factor responsible for hypertension as clearly stated in Davidson, right? Option C, as most of you rightly mentioned, is the right answer, okay? I hope it's clear or uh, you have any confusion. Lack of uh, exercise is obviously uh, till the balance towards unhealthy lifestyle, isn't it? Okay, now let's move on to the next question. When measuring blood pressure, the cuff size, so we have cuff size, uh, medium, large, or universal uh, with varying inches. So which cuff size is selected? Or in other words, when measuring blood pressure, cuff size is selected such that it covers or encompasses. Option A, one third of arm circumference, greater than two thirds of arm circumference, not significant or only significant in case of obese patients. So which option do you think is more appropriate? So what about option D? So it can be obese or non-obese individual, but the criteria is very important. The circumference covering or encompassing the circumference of the arm. So more than two thirds, right? So consider this very, very important. Good. As I said, yeah, as I said uh, at the beginning of this session, uh, I'm throwing this as a challenge. So you're not going to make any mistake, provided you had attended all these textbook discussions, right? So now moving on to the next question, which class of antihypertensive should be used with caution in patients with renal impairment? Go through the question carefully and go through the keywords as well. So which class of antihypertensive should be used with caution in patients with impaired renal function or renal impairment? So options include beta blockers, alpha blockers, AC inhibitors, calcium antagonists. So in fact, we discussed the same yesterday as well. 
So in case of pregnancy, uh, in the table which we had gone through, two classes are contraindicated because of their teratogenic potential. Exactly. In case of, yeah, angiotensin con converting enzyme inhibitors, all prills and even angiotensin receptor blockers, losartan, uh, candesartan, etc. Yeah, AC inhibitors. Good. Option C is right answer. Go, do go through that table. And uh, as some of you have uh, get, uh, gotten back through mail with all those contraindications, and all consider that exercise very, very important. So make notes accordingly. Good. Fantastic. Now, assertion and reason. Go through this game very carefully and let me know whether both statements are true or false. Also, let me know if reason justifies assertion. Okay. Assertion states that clinic blood pressure measurement. So we have home, ambulatory, clinic, different uh, blood pressure measurements. So clinic blood pressure measurements are more closely correlated or they more closely correlate with the evidence of target organ damage than or compared to ambulatory blood pressure measurements. Reason? Clinic blood pressure measurements are carried out by professionals, either nurses or doctors. So obviously, the readings which we get are more accurate, and hence, these correlate closely with that of the clinical findings in a particular patient. So let me know whether assertion and reason are true or false. Also, let me know if reason justifies assertion. Okay, so you say a reason is true because clinic blood pressure measurements are carried out by professionals. But uh, when machines are used, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a professional or uh, non-professional. Uh, if a machine is used to measure blood pressure, don't you think it's uh, eliminating that human factor? Yeah, see, uh, anyways, uh, to grossly state, both assertion and reason are false, and reason doesn't justify assertion. As we discussed previously, in one of the live sessions. In fact, it's the ambulatory blood pressure measurements which uh, closely reflect the patient's actual profile and they more closely correlate with that of target organ damage, not the clinic measurements. On top of it, even though if clinic measurements are uh, very accurate, uh, you know, technically speaking or technique wise, but there can be certain other factors like white coat hypertension, isn't it? Exactly. What about white coat hypertension? So technique per se, clinic measurements can be accurate. But when we're talking in terms of its ability to correlate with that of patient's actual blood profile or blood pressure profile, we can consider that as a false statement. There's nothing to do with professionals because we have machines which obviously have eliminated the human need of checking blood pressure, isn't it? So both assertion and reason are false and reason doesn't justify assertion. But technique per se, we can say the clinic measurements are more accurate. In fact, the very same has been mentioned in Davidson as well. Right? I hope you're convinced. So let's proceed with our uh, next question. But before I proceed, the take home message from that particular question is the relevance of ambulatory blood pressure. We can go on deba debating this particular reason, but the take home message is the importance of ambulatory blood pressure recordings and their uh, role in uh, assessing the patient's actual clinical condition, right? If you get that point, that suffice. Now, moving on to the next question, match the following. I'm sure you'll do great. Let's see how many of you will get it right. So on one side of the column, you can see various uh, in fact, it has to be a reverse. This, these are the fundoscopic presentations and these are the grades, okay? Let me just crisscross it. So, you can see various fundoscopic presentations like dot hemorrhages, blot hemorrhages, cotton wool exudates, copper wiring, AV nipping. And on the other side of the column, you can see various grading. Grade 5, grade 4, grade 3, grade 2, and grade 1. So, this has something to do with hypertensive retinopathy. So, do match the following and post the answers in the comment section. I'll review it and I'll give you the right answer. I'm sure you're very much familiar with this. In fact, we even discussed the images. I even posted some additional images in e-classes. Hope you, have, you guys have checked it out. Exactly, good. So uh, see, dot hemorrhages, they're more specifically uh, seen or characteristic of 
diabetic retinopathy as we discussed hd if you remember heart deposits and h for heart deposits d for uh, you know dot hemorrhages right by the way we don't have something called as grade 5 so i can rule it out blot hemorrhages flame shaped hemorrhages cotton wool exudates they are all seen in case of grade 3 what about copper wiring silver wiring appearance arteriolar thickening and the appearance accordingly so copper wiring or silver wiring grade 1 what about arteriovenous nipping so at the point of intersection so there will be constriction of venules in case of grade 2 so with each grade you will see the previous changes along with additional changes like in grade 3 you will find the changes associated with grade 2 and flame shaped hemorrhages and so on and in grade 4 you see papilledema along with the grade 3 changes so it's like cumulative so i'm sure you guys are aware of that right yeah dot hemorrhages uh, diabetic nephropathy blot hemorrhages hypertensive retinopathy yeah you can rule out grade 5 good now let's move on to the final question which of the following antihypertensives are contraindicated in pregnancy yeah uh, one second uh, what was this question did we miss out this question okay okay fine i think we covered this right yeah so which of the following antihypertensives are contraindicated in pregnancy uh, beta blockers diuretics ac inhibitors and i'm sorry because of space constraints i have to write this uh, in this direction so angiotensin receptor blockers so which of the following antihypertensives are contraindicated in pregnancy beta blockers diuretics ac inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers so which one do you think are more appropriate so as you can see in the table uh, which is presented in davidson so ac inhibitors as well as angiotensin receptor blockers they are contraindicated in case of pregnancy so teratogenic potential we already discussed that in our e classes right so very good now as i said we have certain homework questions the first question being what are the investigations in hypertensives that you would uh, advise and second question which part of the hand is used for feeling pulsations thrills heaving we discussed about apical heaving and also some of you got back with grading of parasternal heaving so I really appreciate your enthusiasm and coming to today's homework so most of you have replied with your toothpaste composition it's quite interesting that some of you are even using non fluoridated toothpaste i was really surprised i took it for granted and i assumed that everyone would have fluoride in their toothpaste but that's not the case and the fluoride composition if you observe it's clearly mentioned as a maximum of around 1000 ppm and none of you reported with triclosan but triclosan antibacterial is also incorporated in certain uh, toothpaste the reason why i was talking about triclosan is while discussing suture materials vicryl plus so vicryl plus contains antibacterial substance which is nothing but triclosan right and also uh, you come up with detailed composition along with their respective functions which is really appreciable and what is the second question i gave you yesterday i asked you to note down the medications which uh, your family members are taking if any pertaining to antihypertensive drugs so i'm sure i've gone through the same i'm sure you have checked their oral cavities for any side effects if at all they're using amlodipine and all so once you get familiarized with the practicality once you know what's happening within your home you'll you'll not feel that as foreign you'll not have that apprehension so that was the intention behind that particular homework so i'm glad you guys have done it if you haven't you can and you can get back through mail for any further queries or assistance okay yeah very good so we'll try to summarize all that we have discussed so far and the reason why i wanted to have this particular mcqs discussion is to allow you understand the very fact that once you have standard references there is no way that you'll be making any mistakes 
and along with that we also discussed about the blood pressure values do follow the ones given by british hypertension society as well as the values given by american heart association so memorize the same and get familiarized okay so when you have a textbook discussion when you review literature from standard textbooks you will have enhanced confidence and uh, there is no chance of uh, committing any mistakes right speed and accuracy will be made possible so these are some of the topics which i wanted to highlight so uh, do spend around 30 to 40 minutes to comprehensively make notes of all the previous discussions which we had and it hardly takes another 5 to 10 minutes for you to revise the entire content that's it right so as you can see the etiological factors implicated in hypertension include all of the following except lack of obesity is in fact a good sign so when measuring blood pressure cuff size is selected so that it covers especially critical and obese individuals it has to cover a minimum or a more than 2 thirds of the arm circumference pertaining to drugs so anti hypertensives it should be used with caution in renal impairment ac inhibitors and blockers because they decrease the filtration pressure in case of glomerulus right they can in fact uh further worse uh, renal uh, renal function so assertion and reason we try to understand the significance of ambulatory and clinic measurements and various factors which could affect these readings including white coat hypertension and matching uh, uh, hypertensive retinopathy consider all these fundoscopic findings very very important get familiarized and the best way to remember them is to observe the images right silver wiring copper wiring flame shaped hemorrhages cotton wool exudates etc okay and finally which are the following antihypertensives are contraindicated in pregnancy check out teratogenic uh, potential drugs we have separate tables for the same make a note of them and get familiarized and also uh, the same has been mentioned in drug interactions and once you get familiar even if you don't remember it's absolutely fine but the important thing is that you should get familiarized with the same because it doesn't dent your confidence okay so i hope uh, it's clear and i hope you learned something about hypertension and its related aspects and you have any questions any time you can always get back through mail 24 by 7 so wish you all the best love you all and tomorrow we'll be having a slight change in our timings so i have some emergency work to attend uh, so i'll let you know the timings uh, tonight or tomorrow itself okay so there will be a change in timings for sure uh, i'll definitely get back to you through updates bro okay yeah uh, in fact one of the students was asking me like uh, it's taking so much time to review textbook make notes and all see uh, hypertension management investigations the other uh, related aspects we might have spent around 2 uh, to 3 hours i mean overall for the past 3 uh, days or 4 days we spent around 2 to 3 hours since i was taking up the discussion i spent some 2 uh, to 3 hours but if you start uh, if you start going through the same uh, it takes around 1 uh, to 2 hours you make notes another 1 to 2 hours let's assume so you will be investing some 3 to 4 hours towards this entire exercise but you know how much time does it take to actually complete this topic during revision phase as i mentioned previously a matter of 5 to 10 minutes so whatever time you are spending now is only investment it's not a waste of time right uh, once you understand this once you get that in your mind you will not have any fear or apprehension or else you will be under assumption that this is all waste of time let me just mug up all the information given in some ready made notes you will remember for today maybe for tomorrow but you will never get the concepts and you will never get familiarized with the related information Uh, that's being presented in some ready made customized notes so don't buy such strategies okay so uh, anyways so wish you all a great day and love you all we are lucky we have part today so uh, hopefully tomorrow we can have our session as usual but i'll update you with the timings okay